Going back to school was the best thing I ever did, man. It's the best thing I've ever done, man. Seriously. Man, being back in college at the university and associated with a reputable top name university, man, it's the greatest thing, man, that I've done for myself. It really is, man. Yeah, I had to honor my family, my grandparents, you know, and my my relatives because, uh, man, you know, like I was wilding out in the streets. So, yo, I was like, man, it's time to go back to school. I'm talking about when I was in my 20s, a little bit in my 30s. Um, yeah, man, uh, school, man, school's great. You know, like some, some people, man, they like to like do whatever they like to do. Um, I'm learning some cool stuff, man. And I'm in this electrical engineering program, taking advanced courses. I was in electronics engineering. I blog about this quite a bit because I go back and forth between the world of like urban music, rap, hip hop, and science and technology. I, I, I always wanted to do something in the world of like media, arts, and entertainment. So that's why I created the hip hop rap persona, One Sir Grove. Uh, yeah, man. So some people, they think that's all I do is I just be like rapping on the microphone and everything. And they're just like, oh, yeah, man, you got those One Sir Grove raps, this, this, and that. They have no idea, man, that, that I'm a university ongoing student and that I've been in six different programs. This is my seventh program because man, you know, I'm just saying like (laughs) from a game theory standpoint, like John Von Neumann, John Nash, just like Sen, just like Sen talks about and the new rap that he and I did the uh, duet that we did. Uh, you could check it out. Reverb nation. You can go to my, my link. Alpha Analytical Grove Numeric X. So, Sen, his father had worked in aerospace engineering at Boeing. And I knew his father, man. And I looked up to him and respected him and thought that it was a great thing that he was doing, having come up from uh, California to Washington State and uh, brought his son up and wife, and man, like, Sen and I, man, we used to go out, you know what I'm saying, on the town and stuff as kids, and his dad was like, yo, I want y'all to, like, be responsible, you know what I mean, and I want for y'all to, like, do the right thing, and don't be, like, doing any crazy stuff, man, and come back home at a reasonable hour, you know what I'm saying, so, respect, you know, so, We lived in the aerospace, high technology corridor of the West Coast. We grew up around Semiconductor Alley, uh, if you will, where you have so many companies that produce, that is, make, manufacture semiconductor products and whatnot. Look, man, I'd be at parties with cats, and there would be someone at the party that was technologically knowledgeable have a little workshop, little workbench. It'd be like, yo, y'all, y'all want to see what I'm working on, man? I got this project over here. So, you know, we'd be at like house party, little garage party or whatever, right? And then someone we knew who understood things would have like some little parts or something working on a project, automotive or science, technology related, electronics related. Like I knew this dude, um, from high school, actually, I lived in a rural community. You know, I'm a half white, half brown kid, um, black kid. And uh, so I lived in a rural community once. And one of my neighbors, he ended up working at Microsoft. Uh, he was brilliant. Like his dad, they owned a property that by like East Coast standards would be a multi-million dollar property. And they had this huge garage that had... um like a very large capacity. Um, they had like machine tools and like this. And that. I'm talking a huge, 
like warehouse size, right? That was on their property, like at their private, like estate residence. And it was clean, modern, you know, like state of the art. So, um, my neighbor, uh, friend from high school in that little rural community that I went to for a year, uh, for a year when I attended that high school for a year, he and I, we lived in an area, man, where we had to take a bus to school. So we had to ride the, the um, county, the county bus. It was kind of weird. I'm like, yo, I'm on a school bus. You know what I mean? But he was like a technical like wizard and he had this capacitor, man, that he would like discharge on the bus and it would just like spark up and it would like flame. And so like he knew all this stuff about like gadgets and like components and electronics and electrical systems and technologies, right? Well, he ended up going to Microsoft, man, and making a lot of money. I had so many friends like that, man, because in the world that I'm from, that is the era generation that I'm from, I always talk about this. There was no internet. So we would take toys and like old like computers and electronics and we'd break them open, man. And we just like look at the circuit boards and we like look at the components and assess all the different elements and, and, and all the different parts inside. And we would, we would try to figure it all out. Like, how does it work? How does the energy flow? Like, what's it doing? And we studied math, man, and science in school because, because that's what we did. Like we went to school and we studied, like I didn't start skipping school, man, until I was, until I was in high school? Yeah, I didn't skip school, man, when I was in junior high school. I was a straight A student. Um, And then when I was in high school, I just got tired of being a nerd. So I was like, yo, it's nerd stuff, man. I mean, I'll always and forever be a nerd. But like, man, I can't be like, I played sports. But I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, athletics is cool, you know, I did the CrossFit training stuff, you know what I'm saying, and um, cross country, like long distance, like, you know, I just basically got fit to the point where I'd like maxed out my fitness, and then I was like, yo, I'm done with the sports, I don't want to do it anymore, for the rest of high school, I'm just going to see what's going on with this gang activity in the streets of like America, so I was tired of being scholastic and scholarly, and academic, and I was also tired of playing sports, because gangs were taking over neighborhoods, man, on some level, at least trying to, so I was like, yo, man, we're surrounded, we're about to be surrounded by gangs, I need to learn about this, so joined up with the gang, but like I've always blogged about in the back, in the back of my mind, I was always like, yo, there ain't no future in this, you know what I mean, so like once this gang war is over out on the west coast, Late 80s going into the 90s, I was like, yo, I'm going to become a government contractor, which is what I did and it was what it is and is what I am. So, yeah, man, electronics, electrical systems, different, uh, different uh, technologies. It's interesting, man. It's fascinating to see what was and what is now and what will be. Man, this world is a trip. So. Uh, I look at a lot of circuits. I look at a lot of schematics, a lot of blueprints. I spent probably 20 years once the uh, once the internet got up to speed, um, where it was easy to move files around and and see see data, visualize data in new ways um, that are fast and efficient. I really um, took to going back and looking at uh, older systems, like legacy systems, like old old electronics uh, technologies, and joined up with this uh, joined up with this uh, law firm that uh, that evaluates patents that have been submitted for validation uh, and or invalidation, and started to uh, take a look at at different uh, technologies that uh that are confidential in nature because they don't uh exist in mainstream society yet and uh for the most part 
sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, and uh, have done that on the side for some years now. And they send me projects like regularly. And so I look at blueprints and schematics and specs. I've also worked at military government installations and I've seen I've seen stuff, worked with stuff. <laughs> uh, talk to people, man, about stuff. And so so I just figured it was right, man. Um, after two years of electronics engineering, after years of cybersecurity studies, research, analysis, um, coursework, after working in a government as long as I have, I said, man, it's time. It's time to go back to the to the classroom and take a seventh course. Let's go ahead and handle this ele- uh, this electrical engineering because from electrical engineering, from electrical engineering, I can go directly into aerospace. I mean, I'm already technically in aerospace because, well, I can't really say openly, but I'm already in aerospace. I just need to do what I'm doing right now in electrical engineering to put the finishing touches on what it is that I've, that I've been doing. So aeronautics, aerospace engineering, aerospace systems, spacecrafts, man, come on, man, space, man, you can take courses in space craft systems, space craft design, aero space, man, is, is, is the place to be. I'm just saying y'all like, man, STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. See, for me, man, it's a video game. It really is. I haven't owned a video game system since I was 13 years old. 13 years old. Because when I was 14, it's when I started, like, going out with the skateboard. Like, I mean, I always had a skateboard. I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, staying out at night, you know what I'm saying? Sk- you, know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Like, like borderline truant, you know what I mean? I was like big rebel, like outlaw, like doing all this stuff. Like, man, I ain't, you know, school, whatever. I did it in junior high school, but now I'm 14. I'm rolling around town on my deck. Then started like dating and stuff like that. Then I was like, yo, I got to lose the deck. So I went from, from the, from the Nintendo to the skateboard rebel outlaw, you know what I'm saying? Lifestyle to being like, yo, now I'm of the age to like date. So like, I can't be having a skateboard. You know what I'm saying? So basically, I guess some people would say antisocial, you know, cops back in the day that were like, you know what I'm saying, crooked, corrupt, might be like ostracized from society, alienated, whatever, man, people want to label you as being this, this, and that, man. So there was a time when I was like, yo, I'm done with video games, man. I was 13. At the time, that's when I that's when I last owned a system. I've never had an Xbox. I've never had a PlayStation. I've never had any of the newer systems beyond the Nintendo Entertainment System. Wait, no, hold up. No, I had a Super Nintendo. Yeah, I had a Super Nintendo. So the last time I had a game system, I was 13. I had a Super Nintendo. I had the step up. I did have the next gen. Um, yeah, that's right. I forgot I had a Super Nintendo. But nonetheless, I was 13 years old, man. 13 years old. So, you know, I'm almost a half a century old. So you do the math. So since age 13 and since high school going into college, man, I've just been studying technology, science, engineering, mathematics. That's what I've been doing since then. Damn, it's been, it's been that long, man. Yeah. So I'm in my seventh program. Thanks for tuning in again to another episode of Casting 495 Celebrities Worldwide. If you're an actual true fan of this show, if you actually, truly, honestly appreciate, respect this show, you see, man, I don't always just come with the hip-hop rap stuff. I'm not always talking about outrageous stuff. That's all for show. That's all show business, and that's entertainment. The real one, Sir Grove, the real one, Sir Grove, (laughs) is a scholar, academic, researcher, analyst, developer, shh, man, shh, don't tell anyone, I'm your boy, peace, one, check out the next episode.